Waiting for Miss Liberty by Barbara D. Krasner. The Statue of Liberty is a large sculpture on Liberty Island in New York Harbor. In this informational text, Barbara D. Krasner discusses the construction of the sculpture, which was dedicated on October 28, 1886. As you read, take notes on problems people encountered as they constructed the Statue of Liberty. From the shores of Rouen, France, sculptor Frederic Augusta Bifoldi watched the Isere steam toward the Atlantic Ocean. His 214 wooden crates were on board. Goodbye, my daughter Liberty, he said. At last you are going home. The waiting was over. The idea for a statue as a gift of freedom and friendship from France to the United States had excited Bartholdi for 20 years, but it had frustrated him, too. Designing the statue. Things went fine at first. Bartholdi scouted. Oh, that has a little one by it, so I'm going to come down here. Scout means to search for someone or something. So he looked around for, Bartholdi looked around for America for the perfect location. He spotted a small island in New York Harbor. In this very place shall be raised the Statue of Liberty, as grand as the idea which it embodies. Oh, there's a little too. Embody. To give a visible form to an idea, quality, or feeling. So he's putting an idea into a statue. As grand as the idea which it represents. Casting radiance. Oh, radiance. Sharing or glowing brightly. So casting glow upon the two worlds, he wrote. Then he got down to work. He designed the statue to look like his mother. He selected iron and steel for the frame and copper for the statue itself. He worked with the best engineers in the world to make her tall and proud, running into problems. But soon, a lack of money delayed his progress. He had wanted to complete his statue in time to help America celebrate its 100th birthday, the Year of Liberty, at the 1876 Philadelphia Exposition. Exposition, oh, the first official World's Fair in the United States, so it's a fair, at the 1876 Philadelphia Fair. But all he had to show was the statue's right arm and torch. Later, these stood in front of New York City's Madison Square Park. All right, I don't want to forget about this text feature up here, so I'm going to look at the picture, and then I'm going to take a look at what the caption says. 1876, the Statue of Liberty's right arm and torch on display at the Philadelphia Exposition. Turn the page. The world kept waiting for Miss Liberty. There still wasn't enough money to build her or her pedestal. Oh, that's an interesting word. That has a five, so I'm going to come down here. Five, the base on which a statue is mounted, so the bottom of the statue. So there still wasn't enough money to build her or her bottom. France promised to pay for the statue. By 1880, France collected the money from more than 100 towns and cities and 100,000 people. America promised to pay for the pedestal. It was a huge job. Some might have even said it was colossal. So I'm going to think, hmm, colossal. That's a weird word. So I'm going to think, hmm, I see the word huge. So maybe colossal means big. So some might have even said it was big. That seems to make sense. Famous American artists, writers, and actors donated their works to an auction in 1883. More than a thousand people received invitations to the auction and an exposition, exp exhibition. On the opening night, the head of the pedestal fund said, Here is everything, charming, elegant, beautiful, and splendid. It is an exhibition as our country never saw before. But the exhibition and its auction failed to raise enough money. Exhibition is a fancy word for show. The statue comes together. Hungarian immigrant Joseph Pulitzer, owner of the New York World newspaper, came up with an idea. He printed daily pleas for money. He wrote, The statue... The noble gift of our young sister republic is ready for us, and we stand haggling and begging and scheming in order to raise enough money. Haggling. That's kind of a weird word, so let's look down here. Attempting to decide on the price of something. So they're kind of arguing about the price. Pulitzer's planned works. 
Money poured in from all over America from rich and poor and children too. Jane M. gave 50 cents and wrote, I am only a sewing girl, but I am in full sympathy with your effort. Another child scribbled, I am a wee bit of a girl, yet I am ever so glad that I was born in a time to contribute. That means to help. When I am old enough, I will ask my mama and papa to take me to see the statue. And I will always be proud that I began my career by sending you one dollar to aid in so good a cause. The world printed the name of each person who contributed down to the last penny. Finally, Miss Liberty could have her pedestal. Now it was time to build. Once in New York, Bartholdi's crates traveled by barge to Bedloe's Island. There, small railway cars carried them on makeshift tracks to the foot of the pedestal. It took workers several months to put Miss Liberty together, using a system of numbers, letters, and symbols that had been marked on each piece back in France. At last, two sets of steel beams locked into the Statue of Liberty's steel skeleton as it rose to its full height of 151 feet on top of its 89-foot pedestal. Nothing could shake the statue loose. And on October 28, 1886, hundreds of thousands of people huddled, oh, that's a weird word, huddle, to crowd together. So people crowded under their umbrellas in the rain and wind for the statue's dedication. And there was President Grover Cleveland accepting this gift from France, liberty enlightening the world on behalf of the United States. She was well worth the wait.